This is Module 4, Lesson 16. In this lesson, we'll be constructing quadrilaterals on square and triangular grid paper. Let's start with the triangular grid paper. This paper has, is made of triangles, equal lateral triangles. So we know each side of the triangle is the same length. If we put two of these equilateral triangles together, we end up with a four-sided shape. Since the sides are the same length, we know that the opposite sides would be parallel. So we have two sets of parallel sides and four equal size, equal length sides. We could make a somewhat larger one by using four of the triangles instead of two. And we'll see that the opposite sides are going to be parallel since they're equal distance apart. So we have two sets of parallel sides. But unlike a regular parallelogram, all four sides are the same length. So we call this special type of parallelogram a rhombus. So similar to a square, a rhombus has four sides all the same length, but unlike a square, it doesn't have right angles. It has two obtuse angles of the same measure and two acute angles of the same measure. Now let's see how we could draw a rectangle on also on this triangular grid. Well, we know a rectangle is going to have two sets of parallel sides. So we can use the lines that are on the grid to draw two of the sides that will be parallel. And then even though we don't have lines to trace over, we can match the endpoints of the line segments to make the opposite two sides which are also parallel. And because it's a rectangle, it has four right angles in the corners. So this was how we would use triangular grid paper to draw a rectangle. Let's look at our standard grid paper. This is the one we're more used to looking at. And this is already divided into quadrilaterals, squares actually. So one of the squares in the grid is, is we can easily draw a square. We could also easily draw a rectangle by tracing over the lines that are already there. But what if we wanted to draw a parallelogram with this rectangular grid paper. Well, we know we have parallel sides. So we could draw our two end sides, but we know that because it's a parallelogram and not a rectangle, the sides are not going to form right angles. So we can do that by shifting one of them off by a square, either above or below our initial line and then connecting the endpoints of the end segments. So we have parallel lines, two sets of parallel lines, but the angles at the corners are not right angles, so we have our parallelogram. Now, how would we draw a rhombus on this paper? Well, we could start the same way with one vertical line, but we know that all the sides have to be the same length. So if we count one, two, three squares, we know that this side is also going to have to be three squares. The opposite side will actually also have to be three squares. And then we can draw the final side, which will also cover three squares. So again, like the parallelogram, we have opposite parallel sides. We know they're parallel because 
the other two sides are the same length. And in this situation, all four sides are the same. So we have a rhombus. So let's use, use what we've learned to draw some figures with the different types of grids. So for problem set number one, it says on the grid paper, we're starting with the standard grid paper here, draw at least one quadrilateral to fit the description. Use the lines, given line segment as one segment of the quadrilateral. Name the figure you drew using one of the terms below. Now for a lot of these, there's multiple answers. The first one says a quadrilateral that has at least one pair. So that means it might have one, it might have two, and it has one pair of parallel sides. So for this particular one, any of these shapes that are listed at the top are a possibility. A parallelogram has at least one pair of parallel sides, so does a trapezoid, so does a rectangle, so does a square, and so does a rhombus. So we could choose to draw any of these shapes to meet the criteria of being a four-sided shape with at least one pair of parallel sides. Let's just choose to do, for this one to do a trapezoid. So we're going to have one set of parallel sides. Let's make these two sides the parallel sides. And then we have one set of sides that's not parallel. So these two sides are parallel. The opposite two sides are not. So this would be a trapezoid. But again, as I said, any of the quadrilaterals listed at the top would meet the criteria of having at least one pair of parallel sides. Okay, move on to number to letter B, stop the video and try that one yourself. Okay, this one says a quadrilateral that has four right angles. So we basically have two choices. We can draw a square, because that has four right angles, or we can draw a rectangle. So let's, for this one, draw a rectangle. So we're going to have two sides that are parallel. And then we're going to draw a line that's parallel to this, that segment we were given. And these are perpendicular, so they come together at the corners, forming right angles. And this is a rectangle. But again, you could also have drawn a square for this. OK, pause the video and try C. So this says there's a quadrilateral that has two pairs of parallel sides. So again, we have some choices. We can't do a trapezoid because that only has one pair, but we could do a rhombus or a parallelogram or a square or a rectangle because they all have two pairs of parallel sides. So let's draw a, a parallelogram. So again, we have two pairs of parallel sides. So this one is going to be three squares long, and it's going to cross over two squares. So we want to do the same thing on this side. And then we're going to con connect to make the other parallel side. And we have a parallelogram. But again, you could have done a rhombus a rectangle, or a square. Stop the video and try D. Okay, for this one, we need one pair of perpendicular sides, which means we have to have a right angle, and at least one pair of parallel sides. So again, the only two shapes that have um, perpendicular sides and a pair of parallel sides would be a square or a rectangle. So let's draw a square. So we see that this line is four squares long. So we're going to want all the sides to be four squares long. So 
So all these sides are the same length. And we have a pair of perpendicular because that's a square. So we have uh, right angles at the corners and we have pairs of parallel sides. So we have a square. Okay, let's move on to number two. So for number two, we're using our triangular grid paper. So pause the video and try A. Say for a quadrilateral that has two sets of parallel sides, we can't do a trapezoid because that only has one, but we could choose any of the other quadrilaterals. So let's do a parallelogram. So we have our first line segment. We can draw the other two sides. We're going to make them the same length so that we know that the fourth side we put in is going to be parallel because it's equal distance from the line that was already drawn. And so we have a parallelogram. But again, you could have drhawn a rectangle, a square, or a rhombus because that would also meet the criteria of two sets of parallel sides. Stop the video and try number, try letter B. Okay, for this one, we only have two choices because we need four right angles. So we're either going to draw a square or we're going to draw a rectangle. So let's do a square. We went across here with one, two, three, four. We crossed four of our triangles. So let's go four down, four across, and four on the other side. So we know all the sides are the same. And we've drawn them with right angles. So we have a square. But again, this also could be a rectangle. Okay, try number three. What are the attributes that make a rhombus different from a rectangle? Well, first of all, the all sides of the rhombus are the same. Are the same length. And the angles are not right angles. Okay, pause the video and try number four. What the attribute that makes a square different from a rhombus is that a square. has four right angles and a rhombus. Has two acute angles. And two obtuse angles. And that's the end of lesson 16.